Hello, beautiful people. In this video, we are gonna talk about some hidden signs of anxiety, things that you think are something else but are actually anxiety, all of the ways that I, anxiety can express itself. It took me two weeks to get ready to make this video because I just kept thinking of more. As it stands now, I brainstormed. This is not an exhaustive list. And just know that if you think of more and think, oh, I wonder, you know, we'll talk about how to know if it, other signs of anxiety if I didn't list them here. If you want to help this channel in any way, just look in the description. If you have any questions, look on the playlist tab. Understand, I am not saying there's anything wrong with you. I'm just saying this is anxiety. I'm not blaming you. I'm not shaming you. I'm not judging you. The whole reason I made this channel is because I have lived in a constant state of anxiety my entire life. I will not be one to ever judge. This is so that you can identify it and do something about it instead of wasting your time on things that aren't gonna fix it or help. And we'll talk about some things you can do about it. Following gurus. That's not to say that you can't learn something from people, but when you go from one guru to another, one new program to another, this person's gonna have the answers, that person's gonna have the answers, that's anxiety. I know, I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm not saying they don't have valuable information. I'm not saying that. Lying. The fact that you have to lie means you are having anxiety in that moment. Drug addiction. My opinion is that 90% or more of people who are addicted to drugs are doing it to end anxiety. Alcoholism, which falls into drug addiction. Obsessing. Obsessive behaviors, compulsive behaviors, obsessive thoughts, lining things up in orders, lining your dishes up in order, organizing your closet by, you know what I mean, order and organization obsessively, racing thoughts, defensiveness. Ouch, I know. Working when you don't have to. Overworking. Magical thinking. Now, bear with me. I'm gonna say a but. Tarot cards, astrology, fortune tellers, palm reading. I am not saying there's anything wrong with them. I'm not saying they work or don't work. I'm not saying that they're true or they're not true. I'm saying clinging to them. Reading your cards over and over and over, hoping for a different result. Going over and over the astrology in your head. Well, maybe they read this wrong. Maybe they got that, well, my rising sign, my font. Maybe there's a date that I missed. Numerology. Did I add the math right? Redoing the math. Looking up other numerologies and ways of doing it and adding it up and working it. And if that doesn't work, then using numerology on the names of the people you're involved in or the situation that you're involved in. Do you see what I'm saying? Repeatedly obsessing on it. Contacting the other side with a Ouija board clinging to religion, again, a guru, any kind of outside of you, larger than you entity, stems from a position of anxiety. I'm not saying it's wrong. This is merely a sign of anxiety. No, believing in it isn't wrong. It's going back to it. It's clinging tightly to it needing it over and over. And if anyone says anything negative about it, getting defensive, which was the seventh thing I said. Okay, arguing and fighting with the same person over and over, having the same argument over and over. Ruminating thoughts at night, inability to go to sleep. You probably knew that. Falling into belief systems and then falling out of that belief system and then finding a new belief system and then falling out of that belief system and then finding a new belief system and then, yeah, looking for deities. Looking for deities to explain why. Meditating more than usual. Meditation is good, but if it's all you can think about is to just get, get into a meditative state and then you get there and you have trouble and you keep getting kicked out and then and you keep thinking if i don't keep meditating i'm not going to be able to and then fill in the blank and then continuing to go on retreats and and taking meditation classes i'm not saying it's wrong it absolutely will help help what anxiety 
because this is just about pinpointing anxiety. Meditated an hour a day for five years. Not throwing stones. Organizing more. Getting rid of things more. Rearranging things. Rearranging the furniture. Shaming people in your head or verbally. Not trusting your own decisions, thoughts, actions, conversations, second guessing yourself. I shouldn't have, maybe I shouldn't have tipped that much, but if I tipped less, maybe I shouldn't have hired those people for this particular thing. If I'd hired someone else, maybe, oh, I wonder if I said that correctly. I wonder if they're thinking this or that. Oh, I wonder if that was the right choice. What if I wore this other thing instead of that thing? Uh, listening to self-help audio obsessively, bargaining with yourself, bargaining with other people, feeling defeated, being irritable, cranky, eating and then you're still hungry, a lack of motivation, lack of creativity, assuming something is gonna go wrong, like right out of the gate before you try something, you're like, well, here we go, it's pointless. Well, here we go, that's always gonna happen doing this when you have to install something or update something or bypass something or do something differently when you have to trust someone or something to do something when you're calling and asking for a bill to be changed and before you even call you're like oh they're not gonna they're gonna argue and then they're gonna have to fight with them and it's not gonna not saying you're wrong but thinking that before you even do it that's anxiety worrying that others are being critical of you uh, worried to ever make a mistake, being obsessed with not screwing up. Along those lines, perfectionism. People pleasing. Needing reassurance. Like, if you do something and you don't get praised for it, you assume you screwed it up. If a friend goes silent, instead of assuming they're busy, you just start obsessing on what you did that probably ran them off or that they're angry with you about. A fear of saying no, being hypervigilant, having lots of rules in your life, not stepping on cracks, walking under ladders, just in case, having little or no boundaries. You can't enjoy a gift or a celebration or a compliment. Using coercion or threats with people. Talking about people behind their back belittling people, suspicious of people, even a professional that you hire, like a contractor, assuming that they don't know what they're doing, a fear of technology, being argumentative and disagreeable, being highly critical of service professionals, afraid to try new things, being inconsistent, always changing your needs or your tastes or your likes, people complaining that you are constantly changing, that you are undependable and hard to understand and being unreliable. Understand, I could probably come up with 5,000 things because as many different people as there are, there's that many different ways, but these are just some common things that come to mind and I will think of many more. Do you know of others that I didn't mention? Put them in the comment section so other people will have that. What do you do? Well, first, let me say, if you found yourself saying, yeah, but you know, if you've been wronged enough by a professional, well, of course, you know, that's not abnormal to have anxiety. I didn't say it was. I'm saying that's anxiety. Keep in mind, I'm not saying all of this isn't warranted. If you are irritable and cranky because you're in physical pain and have been, you're going to be irritable and cranky because of physical pain and probably not so much anxiety. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's other reasons to be irritable. But most of these, most of the time, this is anxiety. And most of it's obvious that it's anxiety. Or maybe it's not. And that's why I made the list. So there's no need to get defensive at all. I still get anxiety. So if you want to know my story, uh, you can look in the playlist tab and, and I talk about my journey with benzodiazepines and my journey with anxiety. It takes one to know one. And the only reason I now know what anxiety was, 
is because I now live anxiety free most of the time and I'm shocked at how different my life is and only now can I go, you know what I used to do? Oh my God, that was anxiety. You know what I used to feel? Oh, that was anxiety. I have completely changed. And so I want you to be okay. And so what can you do about it? Well, you've come to the right place. The whole channel is devoted to it. There is a natural medicine. It's the Amanita muscaria mushroom. Everything you've heard about it is probably wrong. So you can stick around, go to the playlist tab, learn about it. It's easy to find on the internet. It's legal in most places. It's inexpensive, especially compared to the destructive things you may be doing in your life or the medications that you're on. I'm not telling you get off of them. I can't give you any personal information or help about your life, about treating your anxiety or your panic. I can merely present you with some alternatives, some things that worked for me. I have dosing information. I can't get any more specific than I am in that. I cannot help you with your private life or decision making. I get asked all the time, but all of those things are considered practicing medicine without a license, but I do as much as I can with this channel and I encourage you to look around comment, read the comment section. There's so much that can be learned. I've got enough videos now and enough people that have commented that there's just as much information there as there is in the videos that I make. You feel like this was worthwhile, please buy me a coffee. I have kittens. I have five of them that are one year old and younger. They eat a lot because they're growing. Thanks for being here. I love you beautiful people. Bye.